All Mr. Right. Kerr, we are ready. All right, and I saw that, Dwayne. Thank you so much. Good morning. This is a Friday, March 4th, 2022 docket of the Louisville Metro Code Enforcement Board. My name is David Pearl. I'm a member of the board, and I will be hearing cases today. With me in our virtual hearing room from the Code Enforcement staff, Mr. Dwayne Fields, our coordinator, who will be calling cases today, Ms. Laura Rocky, who will be recording these proceedings, and Mr. Bjorn Stengel, Code Enforcement Supervisor, who will be presenting case summaries, facts, and findings. In the old jail, Mr. Tim Close will be providing security at that facility for participants that may be there. We are also joined by Assistant County Attorney, Mr. Robbie, or excuse me, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Jason Fowler. <laughs> I got ahead of myself there. And Ms. Kathleen Schoen, counsel for the board. There could be others participating in your case, but only if there's pertinent information that needs to be shared. These individuals uh, will be sworn in as introduce as needed. We are operating today virtually as defined within the KRS guidelines for open records meeting. Several individuals are helping to make these hearings possible and I want to thank them for their efforts. Um, if I have forgotten anyone, please accept my apologies. I will read the following only one time, but it is applicable to each of the proceedings today as we progress through our case docket. As a reminder for all participants, Please wait to be sworn in by Ms. Schoen before speaking. Remember that after you are sworn in, you will be speaking under oath and your testimony will be a matter of public record. Also, please keep in mind that this is an official proceeding. If you make a false statement while under oath, you could be referred by this board for prosecution for perjury or false swearing. I understand that it may be difficult in this setting to know when to speak so that I can give due regard to all evidence being presented and out of courtesy to others. Please do not uh, interrupt anyone who is talking. I will give everyone an opportunity to say something that is relevant uh, that needs to be heard. If the discussion gets out of control at any time, I will step in and stop all conversation until order is restored. When your case is finished, if you're participating at the old jail, please wait for a copy of your order uh, to be given to you. Otherwise, if you're participating virtually, uh, those orders will be mailed to the property mailing address on record. With that, Mr. Fields, can we call our first case? First case, case number. ENF dash PMNT dash 20 dash 010 603 7 Are you calling my case? I'm calling the address of 223 26th Good morning, ma'am. Could you please state your name for the record? Uh, Sheila Branham. All right, thank you. I'm going to swear you in before you testify today. I'm also going to swear in Mr. Stingle at the same time. Mr. Stingle, if you could state I'm, your name and title. I'm sorry, I cannot understand you. I cannot hear you. I, mean, That's I, okay. hear, I hear you speaking, but I don't, you're, you're not, I'm not understanding. Okay, I'm going to swear you in under oath. Today, okay, now I can testify. hear you. Okay. And I'm also, I was saying, I'm also going to swear in Mr. Stingle at the same time. And I asked him to state his name and title for the record. My name is Bjorn Stingle. I'm a supervisor with code enforcement. All right. And if you could both raise your right hands, do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I yes, ma'am. Okay, we're here today to talk about a citation that was placed on this property on October 14th of 2021 in the amount of $200. Uh, that citation was placed for uh, failure to cut all the grass, uh, keeping the property clean, and that was. All the citation was placed for. We were last at the property on 
excuse me, on March 1st of 2022. At that time, um, they couldn't check on the backyard uh, due to a privacy fence. Uh, the other violations that were there had been corrected. But they marked it as sorry. The other violation. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just not here. Miss, Miss Branham, hold on just a minute. The, I, the way these proceedings work is the city will present their case and evidence supporting their case. And I need to see that information first, because if the city doesn't present me with uh, a, a case that is sustainable, then I will um, uh, dismiss that case. I need to see pictures. I need to see evidence supporting their case. Once the city is finished, then I will turn to you for presenting. So if you can just hold on until that's done, I will turn to you when I am ready to hear evidence from you. Thank you so much. Okay, Bjorn, okay. I'm sorry. Am I dis <laughs> you said thank you. Am I dismissed? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I didn't I didn't no, no, I, no, no, I'm no, no, sorry, no. I cannot understand, understand what you're saying. Is there some place where I can do you have microphones or something that I can hear that I can use? Just wait just a minute. Wayne, is there a volume issue at the old jail? Uh, we're checking now. We've got to set out to 100. 100. Okay. Okay. Miss Branham, can you hear me now? I heard that. Yes. Okay. I heard what that I question. I'm going to go back and explain to you what I just said. We are um, the way these proceedings happen is uh, now you're breaking up now. It's I'm 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 I know you're speaking, but I cannot understand it. I don't I don't know what to do about this. I can't tell you that all those repairs have been done. That that it's all cleaned up. Uh, the painting is not done because of the weather, but that's scheduled uh, next week when the, when the weather warms up. I, I don't know. Okay. I, I, I can't understand your question, so I, I don't know what information you're looking for. I understand, ma'am. Hold tight real quick. Mr. Pearl, as far as the case goes, uh, we don't have any violations on it right now. We didn't gain access to the backyard to see if it was cut. Uh, violations several months old. Now, Dwayne, I'm getting some crazy echo for you. Getting uh, some reverberation there, Mr. Stengel. It seems to be coming from Dwayne. Try it now, Doesn't sound promising. Uh, that's okay. uh, that's louder. Yes. Okay, so we have no violations on this right now. All right, um, Mr. Stengel, I think I heard from you that you did not have access to the rear yard of the property to verify that that was indeed completed. Okay. Yes. Miss Branham, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, what I was explaining before was that the process is the city um, presents their case to me. Once they have presented their case to me, I would turn to you uh, for any questions or comments from you. The city has stated that they believe everything is um, is taken care of at this time. They did not have access to the rear yard to verify that the the, the uh, that has been done as well. Okay. As long as I hear that from you, uh, I am prepared to issue a ruling. Um, does the city have any other input, Mr. Fowler? Not at this time. This time. All right. So, in case number ENF MNT 20 01 0603 7, 
the address being 220 326th Street. I'm going to find that the conditions did exist. I'm going to uphold the citation and assess the $200 penalty. However, I will conditionally discharge the entire $200 penalty with the stipulation there be no further occurrence for a period of one year. And what that means, okay. Ms. Branham, is as long yes. as you don't have any other violations at the property um, during the course of the next year, that $200 goes away. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Case number 19 PM 7318 Valley Station Road. Because apparently you started messing with stuff. I'm sorry, I wasn't muted. Good morning. Could you please state your name? Please state your name. Catherine Hamblin. I'm here for uh, Charles Jeffrey at the property at 4622 Valley Station Road. Okay. Is Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Jeffrey is here as well? No, he does not. Legally, he does not own the, well, he doesn't own the property. Uh, we bought the property years ago, but he refuses to sign off on the deed and we have to go to court over that. So uh, he's been nowhere to be found for quite some time. Mm. But I have proof that the property has been paid for and it uh, there is a uh, an, an agreement uh, signed with the court. I mean, with the objection, we're not here today to hear testimony over the ownership. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, technically, no, this is still in the name of Charles Jeffrey, though. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Pearl, we would need that owner, I believe. Right. Or proof that um, someone else owns the property now. Right. Ms. Hansen, um, according to the, the Kentucky Supreme Court um, in administrative proceedings such as this, I cannot hear any testimony from anyone who is not uh, listed as the property owner. And I understand you have some issues uh, with the courts relative to ownership of the property. But right now, PBA is, is listed the owner of this property as Charles Jeffrey, um, and therefore I cannot hear any testimony today about that. So I can do a one-time reschedule uh, for you uh, and push it out to another docket, but um, there would have to be either legal representation to appear to represent Mr. Jeffrey or um, the the ownership of the property would need to be changed prior to that hearing. So, um, and that's really up to you. I'm looking for dates that I have dockets. Uh, sure. Sir, may I add something to that? Uh, no, I can't hear any testimony from you. If you're going to present something about the case, I can't hear any testimony. But it has to do with ownership. It's I, filed with the courthouse. It's filed with the courthouse that, I've that we own the property. And again, Ms. Hanson, I'm telling you, I can only hear information from the listed owner of the property and right now you are not the listed owner of the property and anything that you are prepared to say would be testimony and i cannot hear testimony that is not given by the listed owner of the property so uh, again i'm going to offer a one-time reschedule and I think relative to what you're trying to do, it's going to take some time to get that done. So I'm going to push this, Dwayne, to the May 27th, 2022 docket. Sir, isn't this about the fine, not the ownership, just the fine? I can't it was hear anything about the case, ma'am.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Case number ENF PMNT 20 011530 5 2215 Woodburn Avenue. Good morning, sir. Could you please state your name? John Knorr. Okay. Mr. Knorr, could you please raise your right hand to be sworn in? Um, Ms. Uh, uh, Kathleen, can you hold on for just a moment here? Sure. This is listed, um, and I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Knorr, I had um, a question about this prior to um, uh, the hearing that I should have addressed with Ms. Schoen. When uh, when you look at PBA uh, Kathleen with this property, it is listed as um, Knorr John the Trust and John C Knorr. With it being listed like that, because he is named as an owner, can we hear the case? Yes, if he owns it individually, then I believe we can hear the case. Okay, but because that's the first time I've ever seen one listed like that, where it does indeed name uh, another owner. So he is listed as an owner, so we can hear the case, correct? Correct. If he owns it jointly with the trust, is that the case? Are you John C. Knorr listed on the deed, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, then yes. All right. Thank you, Kathleen. I, I should have asked that question prior to the hearing. That's okay. It's it's cut off on my docket sheet as far as the name. So, all right, Mr. Knorr, well, I'm going to swear you in to testify. If you could raise your right hand, do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Thank you. We're here about a citation that was placed on December 2nd of 2021 in the amount of $800. At that time, there was no compliance on keeping the property uh, cut and clean, uh, no compliance on the stagnant water, and um, no compliance on the gutters. Flashing on the front of the home must be replaced or repaired, and the front steps handrail must be repaired or replaced. Uh, we were last right. at one second, sir. Uh, we were last at the property on. March 2nd of 2022. Uh, at that time, uh, one of the three issues was corrected. It, it, the inspector notes that the property was nice and clean, uh, but the gutters flashing a handrail still need repair. That's true. Um, On that testimony, Mr. Uh, Pringle, I would offer a recommendation of a, a total compliance date. Um, hold on just a moment. I have a question for um, Mr. Stengel. Mr. Stengel, um, you stated that the penalty issued at the time uh, for the citation was $800. I have $700 on my docket. Uh, let me double check. I have two citations. Okay. So, it looks like this has been rejected several times for not having an attorney. Uh, the last one is eight hundred dollars from December second of twenty twenty one was our citation. Is is that relative to this case number o one one five three zero dash five? No, this is dash six. Yeah, see, so they they've actually issued another citation. So we need to go back to that citation. Okay. Uh, I've got it here for the $700 amount that was placed in August, uh, 16th of 2021. Okay. Uh, at that time, there's no compliance on the high weeds and grass on the property. Uh, there's no compliance on a stagnant water charge. Uh, -huh. uh the roofing material, uh, gutter flashing, no compliance and okay. no compliance stagnant on water. All stagnant right. water has been there for 40 years because it's a low spot that the city won't, won't, uh, repair well they gave you total compliance on that so the 40-year run of water is gone at this time right. so uh, um 
And, and Mr. Feller, I heard your your um, uh, comment there relative to setting a total compliance date, and I certainly agree with that. However, Mr. Knorr, uh, I want to hear a little bit about um, uh, the property from you. Um, I, I uh, tell me again, um, Mr. Stengel, what has been completed in the eyes of the city relative to this particular citation? Uh, well, just from looking at our last visit. Uh, you said one of three items were, were corrected. Yes, uh, well, it's, it's cut and clean at this time. Okay. The, the remaining issues are the roof or the uh, gutters and flashing that have been cited uh, and the uh, front steps and handrail. Okay. Those are the remaining issues. So, Mr. Knorr, how long will it take you to um, bring the property into compliance with the handrail uh, and the guttering issue? Well, I'm doing the best I can. Uh, I put my wife in a nursing home yesterday with dementia. Mm -hmm. She was the uh, chief financial officer for my uh, corporation, as it were. Uh, I have all kinds of bills. Uh, handrail is one of the least of my worries. I'll get it done if you say so. Well, I'm. Uh, 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 these are violations of the metro, the metro code, um, so it does need to be done. I just yes, sir. if if I hear. If I set a total compliance date, what that means is everything has to be done. Um, if if you come back for a hearing and everything's not done, my hands are tied as to how I can rule um, relative to um, um, the issues at that time. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to say, um, it, you know, um, typically I would set a total compliance date 90 days out. Um, to give you time to bring the property into compliance. I don't see, and I'll uh, verify this with um, uh, the um, city, I don't see any um, uh, severe safety issue at hand here other than the handrail. And I think um, that's not what I would label as severe, but um, you know, I'd like to see it done as quickly as you can, but I want to give you, Mr. Knorr, time, uh, and I understand you have financial issues as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to work with you, but but saying I'll get it done doesn't help. But, you know, I need some kind of date uh, from you or time frame from you. Well, what kind of time frame do you want? Something that's reasonable, um, uh, something that's not going to um, uh, be financially um, uh, unavailable for you. Well, I have a fifty-two hundred dollar tax bill. I have a six thousand dollar transportation bill, a uh, rehab bill for my wife. It's going to be a while before I can get a, get together some money because we're living on a thousand dollars a month. That's a moment. Um, That's social security. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to, let me see here. Dwayne, put this on the June 10th docket for total compliance. Sure. Thank you. I've got another. I've got another hearing scheduled for April. That's still on the books. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Case number. Case number ENF dash PMNT dash twenty one dash zero zero seven five eight four dash two nineteen nineteen Lower Hunter Straits.
Good morning. Could you please state your name? Elizabeth Wilson. All right, Ms. Wilson, I'm going to swear you in to testify. If you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Thank you. Okay, we're here about a citation that's placed on October 19th of 2021 in the amount of $200. Uh, there is no compliance on the front porch and rear yard must be cleaned up. Uh, the porch and yard are not permitted to be used for storage. Remove tires from the rear yard. Uh, that was the only thing that was fined for at that time. Uh, we have not been back to this property in some time. Uh, well, February 28th, I'm sorry, February 28th of 2022. Um, the property is clean, cut, and secure. Windows and doors are boarded up. Let's see if it's. And there's no cleaning violation uh, listed anymore, so that's been taken care of. Um, I didn't get a chance to see the photos as you went through it, so I guess you guys saw what you need to see. That's a different violation that's been cited. Mm -hmm. Not pertaining to the citation that's placed for cleaning and storage. That's been taken care of. I've got pictures if you want to see. Mr. Field, you kind of bounced through the old pictures. I'd like to see those again just so I know. Um, it was uh, October 19th. Okay. All right. It's just some overgrowth there on the side of the fence and clearly some storage on the front porch. So. Okay. You can go to the next one, Mr. Field. Okay, it's just general. All right. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. The panel open. All right. And the tree. Okay. Yep. Those items are part of a different violet, you know, there wasn't mm -hmm. a citation place for those. Right, right. I, I see that. I just uh, was looking at uh, the appeal and had turned away from from the pictures that were being presented. I want to make sure that I saw everything relative to Kate. Miss Wilson, um, I heard you say that that everything has been taken care of. Is that correct? I, I believe so. Yes. The I was talking about the fuse box. The uh -huh. lid, I mean, the door on the fuse box was somebody had taken that off, and so that's been put back on. Yeah, um, got a tree I also, cut. I also heard Mr. Stengel say that the the door was boarded up. There's no longer anyone in the property. No, no. What What's your plan for the property, Miss Wilson? Uh, to rent it again. Okay, you're just uh, you're you're working just... on it. Okay, all right. You have any idea on time frame for that? In the next month. Okay. Um, because what I'm going to tell you is that the longer the house remains vacant, vacant, uh, the more susceptible it is to other activity that you really don't want to see happen at the home. So I'm glad you've got a plan to get it uh, reoccupied fairly soon. Um, Mr. Fowler, I'm going to turn to you. Uh, for any other comment or any recommendation that the city may have. I'll leave this to you, Mr. Pearl, no recommendation. Okay, all right. So in the case number ENF-PMNT-21-007584-2, the address being uh, 1919 Lower Hunters Trace, I'm gonna find that the condition did exist. I'm going to uphold the citation, assess the $200 penalty. But I am going to conditionally discharge the entire $200 penalty with the stipulation there be no further occurrence for a period of one year. Um, and I think uh, you heard earlier, Ms. Wilson, what that means is as long as there's no other violation on the property, the $200 goes away. Thank you. Thank you. Case number 19 p.m. 13542-PM-7-2815 Slevin Street.
right. Ms. Wilson, could you go ahead and state your name again for this case? Elizabeth Wilson. Okay, and since I've already sworn you in, I'm just going to remind you that you remain under oath. We're here about a citation that's placed on November 1st of 2021 in the amount of $600. That citation was placed for a uh, failure to keep the property clean and uh, move dead overgrowth. We were last at the property on February 28th of 2022. Uh, the property is cleaned and uh, it's the cleanest it's been in a while, the inspector notes. Um, so the, the violation is now total compliance. Okay. Dwayne, do we have pictures from um, the old pictures for that? No, sir, we do not. Uh, Mr. Fowler, you have any comments, sir? No, sir. Not at this time. Well, um, given the fact that I don't have any pictures relative to the case um, uh, to present um, that indeed there was an issue, uh, I'm going to dismiss the case. Ms. Wilson, uh, the case was dismissed. Thank you. Case number ENF-PMNT-20-014481-4 8514 Janeway. Good morning, sir. Could you please state your name? Uh, Luis Angeles. All right, Mr. Angeles, could you raise your right hand to be sworn in? Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Uh, yes. Thank you. We placed a citation on this property on November 2nd of 2021 in the amount of $600. Uh, at that time, the violation uh, was to remove rubbish, debris, tree debris, loose trash, scrap, aluminum, etc., from the yard. Was non compliant. It's also non compliant on filling in the ruts in the yard where needed uh, and to grade the, the yard. Uh, non compliant on a parking violation. All vehicles stored outdoors must be operable uh, and licensed. And that is why we placed that citation. We were back at the property on March 1st of 2022. Uh, two violations have been corrected. Uh, it's non compliant on removing rubbish, debris, tree debris, and loose trash. Total compliance on the yard issue as far as ruts go. And total compliance on the vehicles being stored outside. All right. All those uh, things that they're already being removed. I'm sorry, Mr. Fowler. I didn't hear what you said. That was not me, Mr. Pearl. Uh, oh. I believe that was a appellant. All right, um, Dwayne, I'd, I'd like to see pictures relative to the violations. Uh, I saw the one you presented earlier, and Mr. Stengel, can you walk us through these to point out the violations? Certainly, the vehicles here are there's yeah parked in the grass, I believe, or unlicensed. Either one of those charges. Uh, the van certainly looked guilty of being in the grass back there. I can't really tell. And that one. It looks like the pavement ends there and then the vehicles. The part, of, the part in the back, they have a gravel. Okay. That's not. I'm not really telling to don't park in there. Even I put a blocks in the, uh, in the grass to don't park in there. Okay, but well, the inspectors gave you total compliance on the parking issue. So, uh, this is the reason we placed the fine originally in November. Okay. And the new pictures. One second. Yes, sir.
<clears throat> so it's just some miscellaneous scrap. I mean, that's a compressor. I'm guessing it's scrap at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys, they work in the side and so they keep the side in the back, but I understand that they don't, they don't supposed to keep the stuff inside. It's supposed to put it inside the garage. Yes, sir. That's just more, but you can see the siding and the gutters there that are on the side. That's right. the main issue. And it sounds like the owner understands the issue as well. All right. Okay. All right, Dwayne. Yeah, the, the first time that they, uh, I think you have a fund for like $1,200 in the first time, but I never received those letters because they was, the tenant was keeping it and I never received those letters. Uh, and now, now I know the problem, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep an eye. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Fowler, do you have anything else here that you'd like to address? I offer uh just just the consideration that that perhaps it was a difficult tenant if if we are uh in compliance um a conditional discharge would would perhaps be recommended all right i i do have a question for you mr angeles um you um stated something in your appeal about already paying a penalty of Thirteen hundred sixty-seven dollars and twenty-five cents. I'm not sure what that was relative to. Is that relative to this particular case number? Yeah, that, I think it was the same problem, but I never, I never received the letters for the sentation that the U.S. gave me because uh, uh, at that time I think I was sick. But uh, uh, I received the last one and I tried to check out the problem, and I think there was uh -huh. another six hundred dollars in there. Um, Mr. Stengel, can you look up um, to determine uh, if anything has been paid relative to this case number uh, on this particular property? He had a handful of citations prior to this one. Um, he's correct in that. Uh, and, that's, and that's what I'm thinking is that yeah. but that that payment is relative to other citations, so I can't really do anything about that. But if anything has been paid for this one and I issue a conditional discharge, I would have to issue an order for a refund. But, um, you know, if, if you can find out if there's anything that's been paid relative to this case number. He, he's showing a balance of $600 owed. All the other ones have gone to lien. Okay. All right. So in case number ENF dash PMNT dash two zero dash zero one four four eight one dash four, the address being eighty five fourteen Jan Way, I'm going to find that the condition did exist. I'm going to uphold the citation, assess the six hundred dollar penalty. However, I will conditionally discharge the entire six hundred dollar penalty with the stipulation. There being no further violations for a period of one year. Um, and, uh, Mr. Angeles, that's on you to make sure that, you know, if you do have another tenant in there, um, uh, you don't get other violations because if there are other violations, the $600 comes back into play. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Case number 19 PM 3077 PM 9 2430 Griffith Avenue. Good morning. Could you please state your name? Elio Nieto. 
right, Mr. Nieto, I'm going to swear you in to testify. If you can please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I swear to God. Thank you. Uh, we're here about a citation placed on the property on 6 8 of 2021 in the amount of $900. Uh, that citation was placed for failure to remove and properly dispose of a door, sink, other debris set out in front of the property, uh, calling for the property to be clean and maintained. No compliance on repair, replace the missing and damaged siding along the rear of the property, uh, scrape all the chipping and peeling paint, and uh, make sure that all exposed wood is properly covered. Non compliance on address numbers needing to be posted in the front and rear of the property. Uh, non compliant on an accessory structure ensure all exposed wood on the property is protected from the elements. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just at the property. Again, um, I uh, just one I second. Yeah, I don't want to fix it. Hold, hold on, Mr. Nieto. Let, okay. let the city present their case, and then once they've finished, I'll turn to you and, and you can comment or ask questions. We were back okay. there on March 1st of 2022, uh, non-compliant on the missing and damaged siding along the rear of the property, uh, mm -hmm. and the exposed wood on the accessory structure still needs to be done. Okay. All right. Mr. Fowler, do you have anything else, sir? Not at this moment, Mr. Farrell, just reviewing okay. some information. Okay, Mr. Nieto, um, now, sir, I can hear from you relative to the property. Can you tell me what's going on? I already, I already covered the, you know, the, the garage, I put some siding and uh, fixing a lot of things. I don't know what else I need to do. I clean it in the front and I fix a lot of things over there. Dwayne, um, can you walk us through um, pictures again? I'd like to see the old or the new first, Mr. Pearl. Old first, and then we'll go to new. Gotcha. And Mr. Stingle, I'd like your like comments on these as we go through. Sure. It looks like the rear of the property that's plywood, I believe, or, or peeling and chipping paint along the back. That right side it looks like particle board or something. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Uh, when was that taken? It, 20, okay. Okay, I see right there on that on that bay window. It's missing. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Is the yeah, property occupied? No, nobody living over there. There's no one living in the property right now. No, I just, I really, I really covered, you know, the, the Go, ahead, go, back, go, go know. back to that other picture, please. I'm sorry. Um, the, the second picture, Dwayne. Mr. Nieto, if the property is indeed occupied, you cannot have a boarded window in an occupied property. So that's what I'm trying to uh, clarify. Is there someone living at this property? Nobody living over there right now. I buy this house last year. Okay. And Again. I start to fix a lot of things. What I need is just a yes or no. Is there someone living at the property? Yes uh, or no? Nobody living over there. Nobody living over there. I'm having difficulty understanding you, so I want to verify uh, just one word, yes or no. Is there no. someone? No, okay, all right. I no. just wanted to verify that, okay. So we're looking at the exposed wood there. So yeah. that has to have vinyl wrap on it or, or, or not wrap, but siding put up. Okay.
that was the original sink and door. Uh, okay. Apparently, we caught him working on the house and he had it out front. And, and obviously, that's got to be disposed of. Okay. All right. I'll fix it there, one too. I'll fix it. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the next one. These are just old pictures, Mr. Nieto. We're going to get to the new pictures. So, I need to bring a new picture or you going to get it? No, they're going to show some new pictures in just a minute. Okay. 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 All right, Dwayne, if we can go to the new pictures. Did we lose the courthouse and Dwayne? No, sir, hold one moment. Okay. From March 1st. Okay. Oh, that's not part of the violation. Yeah. Or the citation, I'm sorry. Okay. 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 So that's the garage. It just needs the metal wrap that's on the. Yeah. It needs to be yeah. finished. Up. I see. Okay. All right. That's pretty minor. You can see that he's done quite a bit of work. I'm sure there's just. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So. So we are finished with uh, the new pictures, Dwayne. Okay. Um, Mr. Nieto, how long do you think it's going to take you to get the rest of the uh, violations uh, in order? Probably just give me one month because you know the, the cold weather. The cold weather, it, let me finish. Right. I can work in the cold weather. Dwayne, um, uh, talk to me a little bit about the April 8th or the April 29th docket. Uh, Pretty much all filled, but you can add one or two to it, possibly, Mr. Okay, Mr. Nieto, in order to give you an adequate amount of time, I'm going to set for total compliance on April the 29th. Okay. All right. That means okay. everything is done, and if you come back, uh, we'll talk about the penalty and any discharge that may be available, okay? Yeah, okay. okay. Well, yes. Uh, can you give me a list of what I need to fix it? A list. Um, is the, the little. Mr. Stengel, um, can you point him to the inspector so they can give him a list of items that need to be um, yeah. uh, uh, done uh, for April 29th? Uh, i tell you what, I can give you my phone number, sir, and you can call me and we can go through it. There's not much left on this. I think we'll be closing this case soon. Um, Sir, do you have a pen to take my number? I, I don't want to catch you off guard here. Can somebody there at the old jail write down a number for Mr. Nieto so he can um, uh, call Mr. Stingle? Start giving it to him now, Mr. Pearl. Okay. I'm sorry, Dwayne. He's getting my phone number from someone in the in the courthouse, or do I need to? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. I'll be happy to go over that with him when he calls. Next case, case number ENF dash PMNT dash twenty one dash zero zero. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Seven one zero zero dash two. 9713 National Turnpike. I'm sorry, Dwayne. Can you repeat that case number? I'm still looking for it.
It's uh, ENF MNT 21 0071002, 9713 National Turnpike beyond. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Could you please state your name? Kaylin. All right. Did you say Patricia Kaylin? I'm sorry. You were, I didn't pick it all up. Kaylin, Patricia Kaylin. Okay, thank you, Ms. Kalen. I'm going to swear you in to testify if you can raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Thank you. Uh, we'll place a citation on November 1st of 2021 in the amount of $300. Uh, it's non compliant on removing rubbish, debris, furniture, wood, tires, miscellaneous items from the yard. Um, Non-compliant on registering the property as a rental. That was it. Uh, let me scan up here and I'll let you know how the last visit went. We were back at the property on March 1st of 2022. Uh, property is now vacant. Uh, no compliance on the trash and debris in the yard. And a lot of other work has been done, but as far as that goes, it's just the remaining violation on keeping the property cut and clean. Mr. Stengel, you want to walk us through pictures? I, I see this one, obviously, uh, the debris there. Mm -hmm. It looks like an old chair or something there. Okay. Okay, the stuff in the dumpster is not a, a violation, but there's plenty there next to it. They, they call for the right. citation. Right. Obviously, there's some work going on there because of the dumpster, but. Uh, that's not part of the citation. Okay. Actually, Dwayne, I guess if we could just see what the how the pictures look now from our last visit, um, there's still something remaining. Yeah. Um, was there a parking violation on this citation? No, there was none. Okay. All right. Uh, there was a note in there. It sounded like they were having a problem with the tenant. The tenant was listed as either mm -hmm. being evicted or under eviction process. Yeah. Okay. So this was from the other day, uh, first day of March, and there's still some cleanup that's required there. Okay. Yeah, it looks like their dumpster was just too full and there's still plenty yeah. to be moved. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's the 1st of March. Okay. All right. That was it, Mr. Pearl. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Single, I heard you that uh, the only um, part of the citation that is still outstanding is the cleanup of uh, debris. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. All right, Ms. Kalen, um, um, the city's presented their case. I, sorry, Mr. Fowler, I'm going to ask you if you have any questions or any other comment. Uh, Mr. Pearl, I would suggest that uh, we we do a short final compliance date. Um, I I consider the amount of garbage to be an issue of public health. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, so, Ms. Kalen, I'm going to turn to you now and ask for comment uh, relative to what's been presented. Uh, yes, um, I have evicted these people. In fact, uh, I've had two court dates. The next one's not until the 10th, but they they finally vacated like the 21st. 
so mm -hmm. I can go in and work on it. Um, I did not know that they didn't even have garbage pickup anymore. So I got that going and I got a dumpster. It should have been there today earlier, but it's coming after I get home today again. Um, but they actually um, scammed the dump people and they redumped all that back in the yard. So I've been working cleaning it up as much as I can, but it's been a nightmare. They have done so many damages, it's not it's horrifying. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's come a long way, but it will be cleaned up like within the next couple of weeks, I'd say, totally. All That's right. a lot of garbage. Um, I'm I'm actually going to put this on the March 25th docket uh, for um, total compliance at that point. Um, so that means all of the rubbish and debris out of the yard. That gives you a little more than two weeks to have that done. Uh, but I agree with um, Mr. Fowler that that is a public health issue um, for neighboring properties as well as your property. So um, right. that's, that's where we're going to go, Ms. Kalen. Thank you. Um, I also have a citation from Department of Public Works. I had to appeal that as well about the dumpsters. They didn't have service, so they find me. Is that going to be another date or court date here or? Um, I I don't have that um, uh, on my docket right now, so I can't I can't make any ruling relative to that. Uh, if it does indeed appear on my docket, we'll deal with it at that time. But right now, I don't have anything on the docket relative to that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Case number ENF dash PMNT dash twenty one dash. 005105-2-1501 Bicknell Avenue. Morning. Good morning, ma'am. Um, are you legal counsel for Sunshine Builders LLC? Uh, no, ma'am. I am an associate of Sunshine Builders. Been on okay. behalf. Sunshine Builders LLC, since it's a registered LLC that owns the property, would actually have to appear through an attorney. Okay. What we can do is schedule a date for Sunshine LLC to come back and be represented by counsel. Okay. Um, do we have to have counsel or could it be the actual owner or? It has to be legal counsel. Okay. Um, Dwayne, um, let's put this one on the April 8th docket. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Okay. May I ask one other question real fast? Um, I know that that's a few weeks out. This was a property that was obtained by um, from the land bank and has a, a house on it now that is in, under contract. So we will actually no longer own the house by April the 8th. Uh, right now, um, uh, that um, what's on the docket is Sunshine Builders LLC. If ownership changes during that time, um, then um, Sunshine Builders LLC and their attorney should be contacting uh, the code enforcement department. Code enforcement department, and they uh, can remove it from the docket if if needed at that point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Case number three six zero oh, three six eight zero one four dash ENF dash ZM dash forty six two oh nine twenty eighth street.
Good morning. Could you please state your name? Regina McBride. All right, Ms. McBride, can you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. Thank you. We placed a citation referral on 915 of 2021 on this property, resulting in a thousand dollar citation. Uh, high grass in the front easement and side yard needed to be cut, trash and debris on the rear yard uh, needed to be removed. Uh, There's also non compliance on a front porch light fixture that is missing. Uh, exterior surfaces with chip, chipping and peeling paint and siding needing to be installed, exposed wood needing paint, and a roof violation was in non compliance. Uh, all gutters and downspouts must be installed, be properly free of debris. Uh, there's also no compliance on a window violation. Left side window glass is broken. Uh, we were just at the property again on March 2nd of 2022. Uh, all the listed violations are non compliant with the exception of the cleaning violation, which is partial compliance at this time. Uh, a lot of the trash has been removed, uh, except for a pile of fallen tree debris in the yard. Uh, we can look at that in the photos, I hope, and see if that if the tree debris is new, it might be different than what was there before. Uh, Non-compliance, well, as I mentioned, non-compliance on everything, except some of the cleanup has been done. Okay. Uh, okay, that's the missing globe. Mm -hmm. That's an awfully easy fix. That just needs a proper thing to cover that that light bulb. Uh, a little painting needed on that window. Mm -hmm. The siding issue. Yeah, the, the plastic corners are destroyed somehow. Okay. Broken window. Uh, gutter and soffit issue that have been cited. Right. Is there more, Dwayne? Hold on one second. Uh, sure. There we go. More painting. Officer Stingle. Is the vegetation still overgrown on the property? Right. It's, it's winter, but I, are we looking at? As far as that charge for cutting and cleaning, um, the inspector said that there's some tree debris now that's piled up back there. I didn't, I was waiting to see if there was a photo of that from when we first placed the citation. Mm -hmm. It has been removed. Okay. Well, Mr. Pearl, I guess my anxieties are with the growing season once again upon us. Um, we're already behind on maintenance at this property. I'm less inclined for a total compliance date than to uphold a portion of this charge, this penalty, and, <laughs> and encourage further compliance. Okay. Um... Ms. McBride, I, I want to hear from you. I'm, I'm looking at your appeal. I understand there's um, uh, some some personal issues relative to the property, um, yes, but but I but I want to hear from you uh, before I make a ruling. Well, I have been um, trying to get guys to come by and and help me because I'm I'm by myself now. Um, I did get someone to help me with the yard to remove all the debris, the trees and the branches that was out there. So hopefully the same, he would keep would stay around so I could get some of this done. Majority of it, well, all of it done. Hopefully I could, he could get all of it done for me. But all of that right there, all of this has been removed. And when, when I was here last time, uh, you said that you would you wanted that removed first before I start working on the house. Mm -hmm. 
Now I will start working on the outside of the house and, and making it up to to uh, up to power. I see I see a globe issue. I see a soffit issue. I see another issue there. Um, again, that's a peeling and chipping paint issue. Um, all of these are from March the 2nd. That's two days ago. Um, I didn't even know that had fell like that. Mm -hmm. So I need to go by there. They just happen. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other new pictures, Dwayne? Okay. More exposed wood. Okay, that's an old picture. Um, Last new one. Okay, so Miss um, McBride, tell me how long um, do you believe it's going to take you to bring this property into compliance? Because um, we we've had issues here since um, before September. Uh, I'm sure the property has been on the eye of the Code Enforcement Department for um, over a year now. I'd like to to see how you plan to address it quickly. Well, uh, I don't know if it's going to happen quickly, but I can say that I will get as much as done as possible as soon as possible. I don't have the information. Say at least I'm, about two, two, three months to get it all done. I get close to all. I don't. I, um, I, I have to play about here because I don't do gutters. I don't. You know, I can. I can grab somebody that does. I, I hopefully I can get some people that could do the work for me. Mr. Fowler, I heard your recommendation loud and clear. Um, uh, relative to um, uh, Mr. Brown, at least a fifth of the fine upheld it would act, and then you know, with the, with the penalty to follow if if compliance isn't isn't forthcoming. I, I'm sorry, uh, Jason. I didn't hear your comment. Pardon me, Mr. Pearl. I, I recommended upholding at least a, a 20% of the, the total fine here and uh, conditionally discharging perhaps an amount uh, um, to, to encourage further compliance. Um, yeah. Um... Okay. Um, here's what I'm going to do. In case number ENF, or excuse me, three um, is, let me see, let me go over here and make sure, 368014-ENF-ZM-46, um, the address being 209 28th Street. I'm going to find that the conditions did exist. I'm going to uh, uphold the citation. I am going to assess um, the thousand dollar penalty i'm going to uphold three hundred dollars of that thousand dollars and conditionally discharge the other um, uh, seven hundred dollars of the penalty um, the conditional discharge is relative to a period of one year with no uh, further violations However, um, Ms. McBride, um, I'm not going to move this out to a docket for total compliance. That's why I upheld the $300 of the penalty. But 
Um, it is on you to bring this property into compliance as soon as possible. I'm sure if you work with the inspector, we won't be back here uh, for another docket. So just make sure you're working with that inspector and we're seeing constant regression to completion um, to make sure yes, that sir. it does happen. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, do I have to come back here? Uh, just keep in touch with the inspector. No, you, you will not be back on a docket unless there is a violation that the inspector feels is not being addressed. Okay, is his number on here? Mm -hmm. Do I need to keep in touch with? Yes. But John, who is the inspector? I believe it's Damon Smiley. Damon Smiley? Yes, sir. Damon. Yeah. Okay, I will give her his number. All right. Thank you. Eight eight seven nine. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Is that all? E all right. Bye bye. Case number ENF dash PMNT dash twenty one dash zero zero nine four seven two dash two. 2513 Market Street. Good morning. Could you please state your name? My name is Willie Jordan. All right, Mr. Jordan, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Thank you. We're here about a citation in this place on January 31st of 2022, the amount of $1,200. At that time, the uh, citation was placed for failure. Uh, uh, Mr. Stengel, that's not what we're here to hear today. Uh, I'm sorry. We're, we're relative to citation number two uh, in the amount of $400. All right, I've got it, thank you. Okay. That $400 citation was placed on October 27th of 2021. Uh, that time that citation was placed for there's a lot of violations on the inside and there's no entry. Uh, okay, it was placed for a failure to scrape all chipping and peeling paint from numerous exterior surfaces and ensure all wood is properly protected from the elements. Uh, also non compliant on a disconnected downspout, ensure they're operating as intended, and non compliant on making necessary repairs to the windows so that all the windows open, close, lock, and remain open unassisted. Uh, remove broken, jagged glass and windows and replace the glazing. We were just at the property on March 1st of 2022. Uh, there was no entry inside the house. Um, Inspectors reached out to the owner on several occasions. And some more information here. I'm sorry, I'm scrolling through this. There's a lot of um, stuff inside that has not been done or has not been inspected again. 
All right. Um, can we walk through the pictures, Dwayne, from 2513 Market Street? Unfortunately, Mr. Perr, they the inspector had no pictures for that address. Mm. Let me check in a cellar for you to be on the safe side. I'm seeing several pictures relative to the electronic docket that I was emailed. Yeah. Hold one second. Okay. Well, I said several. There are actually four in there, and I'm not sure they document the items that were being cited on this uh, citation today. Yes, they are, uh, Mr. Pearl. These are the old pictures. Okay. Dwayne, I just sent you an email. There was uh, some photos taken on March 1st of 2022 from Michelle Benzie. Okay, um, Mr. Stengel, you want to walk us through these? That's a uh, peeling and chipping paint on the soffit there and on that side porch. Okay. Another one for you, but John. Single is that a? Um, it, it's more exposed wood that that needs some work. <laughs> that, that metal's right. bent up a little bit. It's it looks as though there was a piece of siding there that has been. Um, yeah, uh, the metal wrap's probably blown away somewhere because you can see the lower part there that's covered. So. Right. Okay. That's the broken window from back in October. Okay. Have one more, Mr. Pearl. Right. You can see that the window's broken. I don't know if you can see the jagged okay. pieces that were cited there. All right. All right. Okay. I and and Mr. Jordan, I wanted you to be able to see those pictures because those are the pictures that were here relative to this particular citation today. Um, Mr. Mr. Fowler, do you have any other comments? Excuse me, while I gather myself, I should have been um, more alert to this opportunity. Uh, Mr. Jordan, it it appears that at one point you let a inspector into the property. Did you um, address these issues that that were were uh, added to this citation that we don't have current evidence of? I never did let the, let the inspector in. One of the tenants was, was in there. They let the inspector in, in room number four. And uh, when she came, she gave me, she sent out a list of all, a lot of deficiency. I got pictures of all the stuff that we cleared and we fixed. And I think she came back in January and took room number four again. Because I was trying to evict, he'd been there six, eight months. 
and I couldn't get him out of the place. To, and I wouldn't go in his room to fix it, hit a room at home. And so as soon as he got out there in January, I think she came before when I was in the process of fixing everything up. Now I have fixed everything up, got picture to prove it. Well, and also, is, I think she got, go ahead. Thank you, sir. That inspector's reached out to you like three times now trying to gain entry to get compliance on that uh, to make sure that she can check off on those violations. That's actually not the citations that we're here about today. We're here about uh, these, these three issues that were the window, the, the gutter and that roof portion or the paint that's needed. Um, Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. and, and we don't have any current evidence whether that window or, or these soffits or and such have been repaired. Dwayne, do you have an have option to look at your email? Yes, I, I have. Them. These okay. are these are March first pictures that you're seeing now. Right. 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 And so they're so to you, Mr. Jordan. You know, I, I was curious about the interior of the premises. I'm glad to hear you say those those issues were were addressed. Though we don't have evidence in front of us, some of that stuff is is really significant. You talk about a you know, a water heater and, and other things uh, deteriorating within a home, and that gets dangerous. So, it, you know, that's not why we're here today, but I'm glad to hear you say that you're addressing that stuff. Now, why why haven't you, you know, painted these, or why haven't you addressed these broken windows and painted these uh, other things that needed attention? I got everything right here. And all the stuff that she went through, she said uh, the water he didn't have a green stick on. She was correct. But she said it had never been inspected. Here is the inspector. Mr. Jordan, is it your testimony today? I'm I'm I gotta interrupt you, sir. Is it your testimony today that you got up there and fixed this gutter with, within the time frame allowed here? I'm looking at a picture that says March first, and you're gonna tell me that you got up there and fixed that? We've had some nice days, but is that your testimony? I'm saying that it hit the fix. Whatever you're talking about, I have prepared everything. Are you looking at the same thing I'm looking at? On the page, on the server, on, I didn't get that, that piece right there. I did not get that. But the okay. gut coming okay. down. Okay. I got okay. pictures to show that I pr Okay. I, I appreciate your honesty. So, I mean, so we've got a few things that you haven't addressed, and I'm going to recommend that we give you some time since you are working to address them, but a final comp, uh, compliance day is gonna mean that everything that we've seen here today is is addressed. And that, that would be my recommendation, Mr. Fowler. Right, uh, and I hear you loud and clear, uh, Mr. Fowler. Uh, and I'm in, I'm in total agreement there, uh, but, uh, but Mr. Jordan, um, uh, I do want to, to talk to you, sir. Um, it is imperative that um, that inspector get inside this property so this board understands that some of these major issues that were cited, be they correct or incorrect, have been addressed. Um, so I'm going to throw that on you, and we're going to we're going to issue a total compliance date for these issues that we saw here today. But at the time of that hearing as well, I'm going to talk to you again because I see breaker box issues. I see a room that is inhabited that is uninhabitable. I see an issue with doors. I see an issue with. Um, a whole lot of other things that are safety related issues that I want absolute certainty they have been repaired, fixed, and are, are no longer there. So um, the total compliance state that I'm gonna set uh, for this um, is 30 days out. I'm gonna uh, set it on um, April 8th. Uh, and I do want to hear from you on that date relative to those uh, issues. Um, Mr. Stingle, I would like an inspection. Uh, uh, I'm, in fact, I'm going to order an inspection 
uh, within the next two weeks of this property. I want to hear that the inspector was indeed inside and has resolved these issues. And that is on you, Mr. Jordan, to arrange with that inspector to get them in within two weeks. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Pro. Thank you very much. Next case, case number ENF dash PMNT dash 21 dash 00 4245 dash 3 4044042nd Street. Can I ask a question to, before I leave? Would the inspector uh, notify me when the day's day coming? The inspection, the reinspection. Sir, I believe she left you a couple messages. You know, you can work that out with her. It's it's not that we're, you know, as soon as we get in there and check off on those things, we can close this case. So if you can reach out to Michelle Benzing, she'd be happy to go back in and check those off. Okay, then. Okay, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's address is 404 42nd Street, case number ENF dash PMNT dash 21 dash 004245 dash 3. Good morning. Could you please state your name? Mary L. Bell. All right, Ms. Bell, please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Thank you. Uh, folks, we're here today about a citation placed on this property on October 12th of 2021 uh, for the amount of $500. Uh, the fence needs repair and was cited uh, to be fixed, repaired, replaced, removed, uh, and the, it was not done. Um, we were just back at the property on March 1st of 2022. And non-compliant, the fence remains uh, Unrepaired. Uh, looking at this picture, you can see that the fence is in pretty bad shape. Uh, I will say out loud, ma'am, uh, there's nothing that requires you to have a fence by code. If you would like to remove that fence, then the violation would disappear as well. But with it being in that condition, it needs repair. Um, we'll also, well, this is from October. We'll, we can look at the. Uh, let me show you the new one. Thank you. Hold on a second. Mr. Fowler, do you have anything else to add before we proceed with Ms. Bell? No, Mr. Pearl. Okay, Ms. Bell, I'd like to hear from you. Um, and I read your appeal, and I understand from your appeal that um, you have done some cleaning in the yard, um, but this particular citation is relative to the fence um, and we need to make sure that you plan to address the fence. Okay, what I can do, I took half of the fence down because on the, uh, as I'm standing on the left side is where my father-in-law lives and the reason why the fence is uh, tore up is because of the tree of in his, on the side of his yard. But if y'all want me to, I can tear the whole fence down, but I, I left half of it up because uh, I'm in the process of moving out of the house. Mm -hmm. um, Selling the house, I'm getting ready to try and sell it. Miss Bell, can I ask you to look at this picture? Is this picture um, telling us what you have <laughs> removed? Well, yeah, right here on this side is where his tree is. And I moved half of the fence because of the neighbors coming in and out of my yard. Like on the mm -hmm. right side of the house, as, as you go in this side right here at the end of the house and go right, my next door neighbor, he broke in my yard and stole some items of mine. And I had to call the police on him. And uh, I did get that back, but he also came inside my house and mm -hmm. stole two TVs. Mm -hmm. 
out of my house, but I can tear the rest of the fence down. But like I said, the neighbors come in and out of my yard. Okay, Mr. Stengel, I'm going to ask you a question. Do, and I know this picture is not absolutely great, but um, uh, do you still see an issue with that remaining portion of the fence there? Uh, Mr. Pearl, I do not. From this photo, the inspector obviously wouldn't wander into her backyard. So from that, that vantage point, uh, I don't really have a problem with what's remaining there. Now, he added a new violation, man, to to the case. It's not any part of the citation, but you got to make sure you keep that clean, get the, the stuff out of the shed, and keep the property right. and clean. Okay. But as far as the fence thing, I, for those reasons, I think we're okay. Would you consider this compliant now, Mr. Stengel? There's a lot going on in that photo that uh, it's relative uh, to the citation. Uh, relative to the citation, I, I think the, the damage portion has been removed from what I'm looking at. Okay. Mr. Fowler, I want to hear from you. What What's your viewpoint here? It, I know I see some other things that need to be taken care of. I know, you know, yeah. But relative to this particular citation, um, you know, we saw before in the, the pictures that were presented, the fence was heavily damaged. What she's done is I think she's removed the heavily, heavily damaged portion of that fence. Um, so, you know, I want to hear from you. I concur. What I the the damaged portion is gone. It it's still in need of work. Mm -hmm. I, it, but for the, it, it seems as though other citations are in the works or she's having a conversation with code enforcement, but for the purposes of this citation, I'd say the violation has been um, addressed. Yes, I, I would agree with that. Miss Miss Bell, I'm going to keep turn the to fence you up. Because um, what we've established here is that the work that you have done, you removed the, the, the portion of the fence that was in need of a repair. Um, so that, that portion relative to this citation has been corrected. However, I'm going to tell you, if I issue a conditional discharge of this $500, and an inspector goes back to the property and there are other violations, this $500 comes back into play. So I want you to know that that's what I'm prepared to do. I'm prepared to issue a, a conditional discharge here, but it's on you. You gotta get anything and everything else that's, that's there that might um, um, uh, cause another citation to be issued uh, taken care of because if you don't, then the $500 is going to come right back into play. And I understand you're in the process of moving, but I, I do want to, um, uh, you know, help uh, as much as possible in terms of, of what we see here today. And I think that's been satisfied. So um, just so do y'all need that. me to tear um, the, do you want me to tear the shed down or? No, just no, take the stuff um, out. Just, uh, from, okay. from what I see, it's it's more of a cleanup issue than anything. Okay. Okay. All just right. getting the junk and debris out of the way, okay. yeah, making sure that you know there there's um, you know uh, uh, it, the property is cleaned and cut. That's that's basically what I'm saying, Mr. Stengel. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, he was just there, I believe, on the 1st of March. So, ma'am, you'll be getting a letter in the next 10 days. And it's got listed on there what he's requesting of you. Okay. All okay. right. All right. So, so, in case number ENF-PMNT-21-00425-3, the address being 40442nd Street, I'm going to find that the condition did exist. I'm going to uphold the citation, assess the $500 penalty. However, I'm going to conditionally discharge that entire $500 penalty with the stipulation there be no further violations for a period of one year. Okay, one other thing is I called the Metro of Louisville and I got some kitchen cabinets laying out on the side of the yard, but they told me they don't come through till April 15th. Um, 
Yeah. You don't want to keep those out there. That long. The yeah. Man, I, we don't. I, go ahead, Mr. Single. I'll let you address that. We're not, we don't really have that issue before us. That's something you're going to have to work out with your code enforcement officer. Uh -huh. We don't issue advisory opinions. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Single. My, my ears are not working well this morning, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fowler. That was you. <laughs> it, it was me. And Mr. Single, if you'd like to add anything to that, please don't let me step on your toes. No, that's okay. I think she can find help if she contacts her inspector. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you. all Thank you, Ms. Bell. Case number 16 PM Good morning, Mr. Bean Blossom. Nice to see you again. Good morning. <laughs> nice to see you, uh, partially. <laughs> I, I I didn't think I would see you back in this courtroom again. I have to say that. Oh, really? I didn't. Well, uh, I was worried about you in that casting, and uh, and and uh, you know, right. talked about that a long time at your age and, and that property and being a. Uh, Three floors of scaffolding was very uh, scaffolding was very scary for the for the board. So um well it is for me as well at this yes. point. Um uh so we're gonna we're gonna proceed with this case and, and uh, uh just for everyone that's present, um we've had Mr. Bean Blossom here uh relative to this property a number of different times. Um he um continued uh to pursue his right uh to address the issues uh, at this property uh, in a timely basis with the code enforcement department and um you know we were happy to to allow him to do that however uh, we did register some some big concerns uh, relative to his age and the fact that he was dealing with a three story building um, and um, you know was going to pursue uh, doing the necessary repairs himself on that property um, and um, you know we had, we had hoped that we had mutually agreed to to get these things taken care of uh, uh, timely. Uh, and, um, and that was just, I think in, in my eyes, that was relative to about 2 years ago. Um, so, um, uh, here we are, uh, and, uh, Mr. Stingle, uh, after Miss and Miss Sean swears and Mr. Ben Botham will, will proceed. But there is, uh, some history with this property. We all needed to be aware of. Mr. Bean Blossom, I'm going to swear you in. If you can raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I will say that this is my first time being involved with this case. So, uh, Mr. Pearl, you know more about it. Uh, than I do, but looking over it, it, this dates back to October. Do you want me to go over where we first placed the set when we placed the citation as, as we do with most cases or? No, you can, you can start with, with this particular citation and while we're here today. And I, and I think Mr. Bean Blossom has laid out in his, uh, uh, appeal, uh, what his plans are to address that and we'll proceed from there. Okay, sir. Um. The citation we're discussing today was placed uh, October 19th. Let me give me one second. October 19th of 2021. At that time, uh, <clears throat> it was non compliant on downspouts, non compliant on exposed wood surfaces. 
uh, non-compliance on windows to be in good repair, and a new vial. Uh, and that's what the citations were placed for. We were just back at the property on March 2nd of 2022. Um, inspector notes only one issue corrected. Um, the downspouts that we're fine for are still non compliant, exposed wood needing paint, uh, still non compliant, and non compliant on the windows to be in good repair. Um, I will note that the parking in the grass violation is in total compliance just because I saw that picture of that car. Okay. I can turn it over to you now. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Power, uh, do you have anything else to add, sir? No recommendation at this time. Okay. Um, Mr. Bean Blossom, I read your appeal. I understand that, that you have decided that um, you are no longer physically able capable of taking care of the property and that you are looking to uh, negotiate a sale of the property. Is that correct, sir? It sure is. Okay. Um, and, and I understand that. Do you have any potential uh, 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 buyers for the property right now? Have you? I contacted a gentleman by the name of Jedediah Bowman, who describes himself as a wholesaler of property here in Louisville. And he has certain uh, amount of buyers in his, um, to his access to purchase property. And he has not produced positive results at this point. He has emailed me specifically something directed to the board, which I was not able to reproduce at Walgreens like I did, did these pictures. And uh, so I, I do have that on my phone if that's of, of any use to you at this point. It's just his opinion and means of contact to him. Mm -hmm. And I've also spoken with J.P. Pirtle. Mm -hmm. I had a conference in, in his uh, office with uh, a gentleman he's assigning to sell the property, mm -hmm. but we have not signed an agreement at this point. I'm also aware of a realtor by the name of, um, uh, what is his name? Uh, Floyd McCarthy who is with Remax, and I'm also aware of another Remax realtor who's mm -hmm. shown interest towards selling the property. Her name is Ruby Patterson. Mm -hmm. And so if Mr. Bowman is not able to proceed with this in a pr more productive way, I guess I will probably list the property, which I was trying to avoid doing. Right. But those are things I have in mind, and they will happen quickly. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping, of course, once it's listed with a larger inventory of buyers with the realtors, maybe mm -hmm. someone will show an interest in purchasing the property. Mr. Pirtle, in fact, once said he felt as though there, I should be prepared for as many as 10 or 15 people to see the property in one day. Yeah. So I think he has some things in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and I hate to come to this point because I I still love the house. I always will. But yes. I had a stroke, which doesn't allow me much stability on my feet. Right. To get right. up 40 feet off the ground and, and paint. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, Mr. Bean Blossom, I... Uh, uh, this is near and dear to my heart. I have to say that um, you, 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 I, I realize uh, this has been a labor of love for you for many, many years. Um, and it's an older home, um, but it has a, a significant amount of character. Uh, and I think that's reflective on your care and your uh, ability to look after the property for a number of years. And at some point, 
we all get to that point to where uh, big old properties are, are wonderful and beautiful, but we just can't take care of them the way we need to take care of them. So I understand completely. Um, I want to give you uh, time. Let me let me ask Mr. Fowler and Mr. Stengel to weigh in here. Do you see any issue relative to safety in this particular property right now uh, that needs to be addressed addressed immediately? Mr. Stengel, do you have a comment on that? Um, I will say now that I've seen pictures of the house, I've definitely been there over the last 11 or 12 years. Um, I, I don't believe there's any safety issues at this time, but I, I believe it's just been the continuation of what you've discussed. I have to rely on Officer Stingle's testimony there. I don't um, see any apparent safety concerns. Okay. Um, what I would like to do is to put this on for status. I'm going to go 90 days out. Dwayne, will you put it on for status on uh, May the 27th? Um, and that gives you time, Mr. Bean, Bean Blossom, to possibly um, uh, maybe even potentially have a sale of the property by then. I've always presented. I've always appreciated your consideration as well as today. So I, I appreciate your doing that for me. All right. Thank, thank you so much, sir. And thank you as well. I do have pictures if you need to see them regarding the citations. I'm, I'm, I'm good, Mr. Green Blossom. I, I trust your testimony um, very much, sir. I appreciate it and thank you so much for your consideration, you. all of you. Uh huh. All right. You have a good day. We have a Ron Smith, uh, Ronald Coleman online. Yes. Yes. Okay. Ron Smith, what address are you here regarding, sir? I'm I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? What address are you here regarding? 1921 West Broadway. <clears throat> and Mr. Coleman, the address that you're here for? 46 Smith. Ron Smith. No, I'm I'm speaking to Ronald Coleman. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm you got the wrong one. 46 14. Mr. Coleman, what? Are, Cliff Avenue? Yes, sir. Did you receive my pictures from yesterday? We will get to that when your case is being called, sir. I'm sorry. We'll go ahead and case number ENF dash PMNT dash 21 dash 014640 dash 1 1921 West Broadway. Yes, that's that's me, Ron Smith. All right, Mr. Smith, could you please um, start your video? We do not see you yet. Dwayne, I'm lost with case number here. Can you call that for me again? It's yes, that's the very last one. E N F dash P M N T dash twenty one dash zero one four six four zero dash one. All right. Um, it does not have an address on the on the docket. That's why I'm, I'm lost. Nineteen. Yes, sir. Nineteen twenty one West Broadway. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Smith. We show this as being owned by the limited liability company Ron Smith LLC. Uh, that's your limited liability company. Um, I understand. However, since it's since the property is owned by a business entity, that business can only appear by an attorney in proceedings such as this. Has to be represented by an attorney to appear. Well, that wasn't in my instructions. It should have been in a letter that you received scheduling. Um, the business to be here today for this hearing. Well, um, I don't, I had the, I misplaced that particular letter and I asked 
or, uh, the young man emailed me uh, additional information and then, and it wasn't, I didn't see anything about an attorney. Uh, okay. We can give you another date to an, to appear with legal counsel. Well, I tell you this, they took about 3 months. Uh, how far out are we talking about? Uh, are you looking to come back relatively soon? Okay, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you what I just, uh, uh, I'm actually contesting the. Not the fact that there was some material back there, but I'm confessing. I'm contesting the fact that I was issued a. Mr. A Mr. Fan, Smith, and I'm just, we can't hear any testimony about the case today because we, we do the, the company is not represented by legal counsel. So I can't hear any testimony. I can okay. give you a one time reschedule uh, and I'm trying to find out from you uh, what date that would be appropriate. I can do um, what I'm looking at is the April 29th docket. Um, uh, it would probably be um, that 60 days out. Did you say April 29th? April 29th. Okay. That'll be fine. All right. Thank you. Case number ENF dash PMNT dash 21 dash 012230 dash 46616 Cliff Avenue. Forty six fourteen Cliff Avenue. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Coleman. Yes. Please state your name for the record. Ronald Coleman. All right, Mr. Coleman, if you can raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. Thank you. Okay, we're here about a citation in place on October 28th of 2021 in the amount of $600. That time is non-compliance to scrape and paint all areas of the house with chipping and peeling paint. Uh, there was. That was the only citation, only violation that caught the citation. Uh, we were just back at the property February 28th of 2022. Uh, the inspector notes that the property is not quite in compliance, but a tremendous amount of work has been done to get it there. Um, so exterior surface still needs the work done. I also sent um, Dwayne uh, some updated pictures yesterday. I'm working, you know, I have a full time job, of course, and I work along with the weather. So it's it's coming along, but not as quick as I like it. I'm by myself, so. I understand the inspector made note of that. If we could look at a couple of the old pictures and then see what we have uh, as far as the photos you submitted. Thank you, Dory. Dr. Owens, October 28th. Okay. okay, if you can progress to through those, Dwayne. Um, and get to the new pictures. Um, I've got an idea of what the issues were with the property. Another new one. And you can see quite a bit of work has taken place there, obviously. Um, but I also saw, Dwayne, that you have some witness pictures there as well. Yes, sir. All right. 
and I'd like to see those. <clears throat> Mr. Coleman, while he's pulling these up, can you tell me when these pictures were taken? I took some pictures yesterday. Okay. As I can with the weather. Of course, you guys know along with paint, you can't paint when it's freezing right. or something like that. So right. I, I every chance I get, you know, my job sometimes, thankfully, the weather's changing and the daylight's staying longer. A lot of times I get home, it's too dark to even do anything. Okay. How long do you think it's going to take you, Mr. Coleman, to, to, to finish this up? And I know it's all relative to weather and, and a time of yes. availability. Yes. Um, the, the, the pictures that you are seeing now should be completed within a month, but that's, that's not going to stop my process. I'm still in the process of doing everything else. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, just on the compliance of that, hopefully within a month, I'll have have all that taken care of, but I'm going to be uh, moving through the whole house, not just the front. If I, if I tell you, um, we're going to set it for total compliance in 60 days. Is that going to, uh, do you think that's going to be doable? For the pictures that we are seeing. Uh huh. Yes. 60 days for what I'm seeing that we are seeing now. Yes. No objection, Mr. Pearl. Okay. All right. Um, uh, so, Dwayne, put this on the docket for April 29th for total compliance. Thank you, Mr. Coleman. I know the weather hasn't been great right now, uh, you know, but. Uh, Hopefully, uh, we're we're going to take a turn for the better here. Yeah. Well, I've um, also when I appealed, uh, I've been in therapy and uh, have it, uh, some some issues, and I was supposed to have an MRI done on Wednesday, and they canceled that. So, it's yeah, just, you know, I'm okay. I just it's just uh, I've heard a lot, but yeah, I, but I, and I understand. I and and it's read your appeal, and I understand that. And that's why I want to work with you to make sure. I appreciate that, that very much. Is there a certain time that I need to be back on or? Um, uh, if, if you're going to participate at um, uh, electronically, like you've done here virtually, um, then um, those cases usually start around 11 a.m. Same, same thing as I did today. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a great day. You too. Do we have a Marvin Dunn online? Marvin yes. Dunn. Yes. Yes. I'm on. I'm on. Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn, what address are you here regarding? Five three three nine New Cut Road. Thank you, sir. Case number nineteen PM eight nine seven four dash PM dash seven fifty three thirty nine New Cut Road. Yes. All right, sir. Could you please state your name? Marvin Dunn. All right, Mr. Dunn, please raise your right hand to be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I hope you got. I do. Thank you. We place a citation referral on this property on 622 of 2021, uh, the amount of $400. Um, the, the rear yard needed to be cut at that time. Also, there was a uh, non compliance on a damaged driveway. We were just at the property on March 2nd of 2022. Uh, property must remain free of trash, rubbish, and debris. There's no entry on that one. Uh, Non-compliance on the damaged driveway. Uh, so that's what we were back for the driveway and it's not compliant. We are actually on for total compliance today, correct? Uh, I, I couldn't see any of the, um, so were there any, so the only photos that were taken was of the driveway? 
because the last time we were on, it was for some debris or something in the backyard, in the back area. Um, from from what I understand on the last hearing I had, um, we had no issue with the driveway. Um, it was with some debris in the backyard, like kids' toys or something like that. And um, I, I can't remember the other picture. And I, I don't see any of those pictures listed now. I do recall that Mr. Dunn, I was doing hearings a day. I believe there's a broken chair that was in the driveway and we said that we weren't. Uh... It was in the backyard actually. Okay. Yeah. There's like a broken chair and the kids toys. Uh, we don't have an issue with kid toys. Yeah, but... not... Go ahead. Mr. I'm, I'm reading on the docket here and it's saying total compliance and appearance required except for driveway. So yes. driveway is not. Uh, part of the total compliance thing, and yes, I understand, sir. Mr. Dunn, and I am recalling that we talked about the fact that you know the driveway was going to be an expensive repair, and that it could be a, a, a time and financial issues were were involved relative to to working that out. We did not see a safety issue relative to that. So we wanted to give you time to work on that, and you could coordinate that with the inspector. Sure. Um, we were, are here for total compliance on the other issue, which was the, the debris in the yard. Yes, and that that should be okay. I mean, um, I've I've been I've been on top of the mm -hmm. the the, uh, the tenants there, and um, I, I was expecting to see some some updated photos, maybe like from a couple of days ago or something before you guys, um, before we actually had the hearing to see what was actually. What you guys actually actually viewed, as far as us me coming into compliance with um, the the previous hearing, Mr. Dunn, I would say that I also expected photos, but I don't think there was an issue, or he would have taken them. Uh, I don't know. Got you, got you. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, so are we, um, uh, Mr. Stengel, and just to clarify for the record. Are, are you stating that that the debris issue has been resolved? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I, I, I mean, he didn't cite it. He didn't see anything. He wouldn't have gone into the backyard. Um, okay. So there was no photo submitted. So I would say that that's in compliance. Okay. Um, Ms. Fowler, do you have any other comments or any any other question? I won't go so far as to conclude compliance, but if we don't have the evidence, we can't prove it, sir. So, um, I, I will take the testimony, uh, that Mr. Dunn has brought himself into compliance and, and will, um, work out, I believe the remaining issue as needed. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Dunn, do you have anything else to add before I go on an issue of ruling here? Uh, no, no, sir. Um, the board has been more than gracious and fair with me, and um, whatever your uh, ruling is, I, I, I would I would go with, and I would I would take that and, and do what I need to do exp expeditiously to make sure I come in compliance if I need to. All right. So, in case number one nine p.m. eight nine seven four uh dash pm dash seven the address being 5339 new cut road i'm going to find that the conditions did exist i'm going to uphold uh the citation and assess the 400 dollars penalty however i am going to conditionally discharge the entire 400 dollars with the stipulation there being no further violations for a period of one year and um mr dunn um, I think as long as you are in communication with that inspector, we will not be back uh, at another hearing again. So I think you got the issue well under control. Thank you, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. And I, I, I thank you for your, your, your due diligence in this matter. Thank you so much. All right. You have a great day. You do the same. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, do we have a wide hammer sock? A wide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You here. Here. And you're here regarding 5633 new cut? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Case number 18 PM 27634 PM 15 5633 new cut road. Yes, correct. 
Sir, can you please start your video? Yeah, it's, it's, it's oh, not the start. Now it's start. There All you right. go. I can see you. Thank you, sir. Can you please state oh. your name for the record? Hello? Hello. Can you please yeah, state your good. name for the record, sir? Yes, I'm Asad Dawood. All right. And could you please raise your right hand to be sworn in? Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Thank you, sir. We're here today about a citation that's placed on this property on October 20th of 2021, the amount of $600. It was for failure to keep the property uh, cut and clean at all times. Um, we were back at the property January 31st of 2022, the beginning of this year, and um, found the property was in total compliance and we wish to close our case. All right, can you walk us through the old pictures and then any new pictures that you might have, Mr. Stengel? Yes, sir. Uh, that, oh, I'm sorry, there's the debris out there on the top left. There's some stuff mm -hmm. out there on the house. Okay. Um, well, there's some outdoor storage there. I see a couple of tires there by the cone. Mm -hmm. I'm obviously just focusing on the debris for why the citation was placed. All right. All right. It's not part of the citation. I don't believe it. unless it may be some items there by that rear shed. There's some item there in front of the garage. I, I would say just with the with the first photo and the tires alone, we've established that there was uh, stuff in the yard that didn't belong there. Okay. The vehicle's not part of the citation. All right. The amount of the citation was so high, I imagine, because we were back for all these other yeah, items at some point in time. That was it, sir. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a, any new pictures at all, Dwayne? No new pictures because they were in compliance, sir. Okay. All right. Um, so I, I heard you correctly, Mr. Single. They are in, in total compliance at this time. As of our last inspection in January, we had no reason to keep the case open. Okay. Mr. Fowler, do you have any comments or questions? No, none at this time. All right, Mr. Dowd, uh, can you give me any comments or feedbacks before uh, feedback before I make a ruling, sir? Uh, so, yes, just I want kindly asking to waive the fine, please, and I complete everything before three months. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. And and I certainly understand that, and we would consider definitely. I understand you have relocated to Florida. This is a rental property. Is that correct? Yes, it's everything okay. okay. All right. Um, and uh, have you addressed the issue with the tenant so they make sure that there are no uh, repeat violations? Uh, uh, repeat violation? I, I said. Have you addressed these issues with the tenant so they don't have repeat violations in the future? Uh, I, yes, I told him, but I don't know because it's, I have case, it's old case, and I uh, done everything and there is a new violation and I also mm -hmm. repair this. Uh, what you know, it's, the, it's usually the uh, tenant not care. But okay. I'm uh, fix everything, and now everything is done. Right. And I and I understand that. But what I what happens here is there would be a conditional discharge of the penalty because you have brought it into compliance. Um, but that conditional discharge says you're not going to have any violations for a period of one year. And I just want to make sure that your tenant understands that 
because if the tenant causes another violation within that year period, then the $600 would come back into play and we don't want that to happen. All right. All right. So in case number uh, 18PM27634 PM15, the address being 5633 New Cup Road, I am going to find that the conditions did exist. I'm going to uphold the citation and assess the $600 penalty. However, I am going to conditionally discharge the entire $600 with the stipulation that there be no further violations for a period of one year. Okay, thank you so much. Sir. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Have a good one. You too. We have a Greg Deli online. Greg Deli. Uh, yes, Mr. Fields. Um, Greg Daly, I'm here for 3700 uh, uh, Tyann Place. Thank you, sir. Hold one moment. That'd be case number ENF. Dash PMNT dash 21 dash 004688 dash 3 3700 tie in place. Mr. Daly, you are um, legal counsel for Summerfield Properties, correct? I am, that's correct. All right, thank you, sir. And this is on for total compliance today. Yes, sir, that's correct. All right. <clears throat> Where are we, Mr. Stingle, with this case? I apologize. We've been here a lot of times. So I'm trying to scroll back and look at it. I can give you the update on it. Should I start with what the violation, what well, the citation was placed? Yes. Let me scroll through this just a second. The citation was placed on 614 of 2021 in the amount of $700. Uh, it's non compliant on keeping the property clean. There was couches, refrigerators, trashy conditions on the property. Uh, citation was placed with a driveway. Uh, the parking lot had numerous potholes that were in violation. Uh, non compliance on the wall section in various areas. They had cracks, portions missing, uh, bricks were falling from the wall. Uh, the porch balcony had some issues, the stairs and landings and balconies, they must be repaired properly. Mm -hmm. And non-compliant on the gutters in various areas that needed repair. Uh, we were just back at the property. March 2nd of 2022, uh, partial compliance. Uh, owner has contracts, uh, there was contractors on the site just as of March. Um, Partial compliance on the trashy conditions as far as uh, keeping the lot clean. No compliance on the drive, the parking lot needing repair. Partial compliance on uh, the wall, the exterior surfaces needing repair. No compliance. Oh, that's not part of the citation. So it's the partial compliance on the exterior surface. Okay. And was it yourself or some other officer that responded to the scene or made the inspection the other day? Uh, it was another inspector. I do have. Uh, do you have pictures of uh, more pictures than this? Yes. As I mentioned, this was I'm all originally here. cited long ago. Um, the major concern that the city has is with the brick wall that has uh, fallen down. Portions half it was bowed and then bricks started falling out. Half of it was removed. Uh, obviously, these dumpsters continue to get dumped on and around. Uh, what I'm looking at here are June the 14th pictures. These are the original citation pictures. Is that correct, Mr. Stengel? That is correct, Mr. Pearl. Okay. Um, the, it, to my mind as well, Mr. Stengel, that brick wall is the most important. Um, safety concern here absolutely a note for the appeal that um there's there's so 
what my question would be then is, it, you know, did it seem as though to yourself or, or your, your rather your inspector that the contractors on scene were there to address the brick wall? I, I can look as notes, but I would say that's what it is. If we actually could get to the new pictures, it's going to show you a whole lot. Uh, I understand this representative is fairly new to this case because this was last year sometime. Uh, the, like I said, the city's concern with this, the bricks is that mm -hmm. uh, I have Section 8 tenants in this building, and, and they, they're required to meet federal standards, of you know, minimum standards, but at least it, it has to meet those requirements. This property has not met that requirement in over a year uh, or, or since it, since June 14th. Uh, I look forward to seeing the photos that were taken on the 3rd. But that's what I was going to ask you, but John, who was the inspector? Because I don't have any pictures turned in for 3,700 tie in. Okay, give me one second. We'll find them. Okay, thank you. Um, if it helps, I, I may be able to um, refresh the board's memory from. Uh, uh, I, I'm recalling Mr. Daly. Did they say that they were going to actually remove that brick from the uh, box? Yes, sir. And and they have um, at this point. I, yeah, um, I, I thought I recalled that, and I'm, you know, but I'm glad you're here to to jog my memory. So uh, you can certainly proceed if you'd like, and we'll come back and address the issue if uh, Dwayne has any updated pictures. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. So the, the bricks have been removed. Um, the contractor that you saw on site is working on um, the siding. Mm -hmm. I, I received some pictures yesterday, which I, I could email you if, if you like um, of the property. But from, from what I've been told, um, the weather has slowed down progress with the siding to be completed in seven to 10 days. There was a lot of prep work and a lot of metal work before the siding could have been put up. Potholes are filled, the windows are, um, the boards on, are on the inside of the windows, but you can see that they're fixed and the dumpsters mm -hmm. are clean. Um, this is on for total compliance and um, the, I, I, I can tell you that the siding is not yet up. Okay. Um, in my eyes, and Mr. Fowler, you can certainly correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, the issue, uh, and I'm hoping that we can indeed produce a picture, uh, but the issue was this uh, relative to safety and this brick wall. And if that brick wall has been removed, we have now brought it into what I would consider total compliance for that. Okay, I emailed Dwayne the photos that we're taking uh, <coughs> at the last inspection that we were there. Uh, at the time, they were saying that they weren't sure if they were going to replace it, replace all the brick, or replace it with siding, depending on how much it cost. Um, yeah, um, I, I thought, Mr. Stingle, to my recollection, I thought at the last hearing where we set the total compliance date, they had agreed the brick was coming down and it was going to be siding at that point. Um, Mr. Daly, do you have a picture of that? Yes. Um, okay. would, you like, would you like me to email it or, or to share my screen? You can share your screen if you can do that. I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay. Those are from February 8th. I don't, they're, they're good pictures. It just doesn't yeah. correspond with last time. Well, that's showing the brick down at least. If Mr. Uh, Daly can share his screen, maybe we can see uh, an example of what the siding is going to look like there. But the, obviously, we've seen the brick is down. Um, is this showing um, the pictures or just the folder? It's like, just the folder. The uh, right now. I'm sorry. Let me try this. Uh, uh, again. Oh, there we go. Hello. Okay. That's so preparing for the siding and I see that, but definitely you can see Mr. Fowler that the brick is down. Correct. Very good. Yes. Okay. 
and I do believe that addresses the safety issue that we were concerned about. And I have a, one more picture of the windows as well. Uh, and the driveway. Okay. And the the board's discretion is certainly there. I'm. I have no objection to giving um, the the appellant consideration due to the ongoing work that they've done and are are doing. So, Mr. Fowler, I'm happy that those bricks are down. Uh, this was originally cited on five eleven of last year. We were talking about uh, order to vacate these tenants because of the condition and the dangerous outcome. Uh, it, it, I really appreciate the progress. It certainly seems like a long time to get us to this point, and it's still not done. I appreciate that, Mr. Stengel. It's, we we are here on a final compliance date. Um, I, I give it over to your discretion, Mr. Pearl. I, I do want to encourage. Um, I, I should say, um, even though delayed, the the compliance we've seen is substantial and 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 ongoing. Um, and, and that is worth, uh, you know, bringing folks back in is always worth more than um, a, a punitive fine. But we, we have um, have had several uh, officers respond to this location, numerous um, efforts to, to bring it to this point. So all that is for your consideration, Mr. Pearl. Absolutely. Um, Mr. Daly, I'll, I'll, I'm open to any comments from you. Um, uh, certainly, um, I can see some significant effort uh, and significant uh, work has indeed happened. Uh, and I agree with both Mr. Stingle and Mr. Fowler. It took us a long time to get here. Uh, and, um, you know, I'd like to hear from you relative to that issue in particular. Um, yes, sir. When I was here on the um, 11th of February, uh, just last month, uh, I believe, um, we discussed this property and, and you impressed upon me the, the four things that really needed to be addressed, which were um, deciding the uh the potholes the the garbage and the windows mm -hmm. um and at this time as, as i saw in the pictures um just yesterday three of those four things were um complete the the siting is still ongoing um i from what my client says it, it's been delayed because of the weather um however that cuts both ways because one of the concerns with with having the bricks removed and, and the new siding not mm -hmm. up is that the, there are tenants and um, ooh, they need to have siding on the building. Um, what I have been told is, is that there is a contractor working on it. There was a lot of prep work involved, but that um, it is anticipated to be finished within the next seven to 10 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. All right. Um, Mr. Fowler, um, do you have any further comment before I go ahead and, and make a ruling? No further comment, Mr. Pro. Okay. All right. So in case number ENF PMNT 21 006 3, the address being 3700 Tyran Place, I'm going to find that the condition did exist. I'm going to uphold the citation, assess the $700 penalty. However, I will conditionally discharge $350 of uh, the $700 uh, penalty uh, with the stipulation there being no further. Uh, uh, violations for a period of one year. I am going to uphold $350 since we are on for total compliance. Um, and um, I, I do um, take into consideration the fact it took us a, quite a while to get here. Um, so um, that's the ruling for the day. Thank you, Mr. Daly. I appreciate your help and your work on the property. I know you, you stepped in and took on some heavy load there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Today. 
We have a Carla Davis online for 811 Rugby Place. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Yes, ma'am. That would be case number. That's case number ENF dash PMNT dash 19 dash 012295 dash 5 811 Rugby Place. I'll be in the hallway out here. I'll be in the hallway. All right, Ms. Davis, if you could start your video, please. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Start my video. All right, got it. Thank you. If you could please state your name for the record. Carla Davis. All right, Ms. Davis, if you could raise your right hand to be sworn in. Zoom out a little bit so we. There you go. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do, but I'm not the owner of the property. All right, we'll get into that in a second, Ms. Davis. Okay. I'm gonna be up here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um on October 12th of 2021, we placed a citation for $600. At that time, that citation was placed for non-compliance on a deteriorated cornice, soffit above the front door needing repair, and peeling, flaking, and unprotected wood surfaces that needed to be scraped and painted, and non-compliance on the gutters deteriorating and obstructed with debris. We were just at the property on March 1st of 2022. Uh, the property is vacant, vacant and no improvements on the violation. Uh, non-compliant on the, the deteriorating cornice and soffit, non-compliant on the <coughs> door, or I'm sorry, on the exterior surface and the gutters. Uh, here we see a little rooftop garden. There's an obstruction there in the gutter, and there's some peeling paint along the uh, trim there. You can see also down at the bottom, that gutter is, looks like it's rusted out. Okay. Or perhaps they were painted and now the paint is now falling off the gutters. Um, Mr. Stengel, yes, um, I, I'm going to stop you there. I, I, I And I recall this case uh, from uh, the last time that we were here. Uh, and I understand Ms. Davis says she's no longer the owner of the property. Um, and I can look at PBA. Um, and right now, PBA is is saying she is the owner. Um, uh, given the fact that that we are uh, in doubt here, um, and given the fact that um, I know Miss Davis is, is appears to be working, and I don't want to hold her up any longer. Uh, relative to the gate the case, I can see that the conditions exist. Uh, I'm going to uphold the citation. I'm going to uphold the penalty, and um, you know uh, that'll be worked out in the court system as to whether or not uh, anybody owns <laughs> who owns the property. But for Mr. right Davis now, the property yeah. and he's working with PVA. You can talk to Ray at PVA. He uh, accepted uh, and Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis. No, <laughs> I'm not going to get into who owns the property. I'm looking at what I have right now, and um, basically, um, I, I see that the conditions haven't changed. I'm well, upholding I'm not, the I'm, citation. I'm, I'm upholding I'm the penalty. Like and, ma'am, do not thing. interrupt me. Well, do I am not talking not right now. Me. I, do I'm, not. I'm, I'm telling I'm, you, do not I'm interrupt done. me. Do I'm not. Done. I'm done. Um, I'm upholding the citation. I'm upholding the penalty, and it'll get applied to the rightful owner. Thank you, sir. I said, be prepared. Is there any other cases on the docket, Mr. Fields? Yes, it is. I believe we've okay. had a, Do we have a Molly Owens? Molly Owens. 
Yes, I'm here. What address are you here regarding? 7501 Gerald Avenue. I was here last time and number they... ENF. Hold on, ma'am. Hold one moment. Sorry. Case number ENF dash PMNT dash 21 dash 005688-3 7501 Gerald Avenue. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right, uh, Ms. Owens, we still show this as being owned by an Anna Willoughby. Yes, that's why we were postponing um, last time because she wasn't with me, so she's with me now. I'm here present. Okay, yes, before here. you say anything else, let me go ahead and swear you both in. Uh, Ma'am, could you state your name for the record too then? Yes, my name is Annie Willoughby. Okay, and if you could scoot in just a little bit more, we do not, at least I do not see you on my view. Okay. Hold on just a second. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. And I'm going to go ahead and swear you both in. If you could raise your right hands. Do you swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. Yes. I do. All right. Thank you both. Mr. Stingle, can you detail the citation for us, please? Yes, sir. I will, sir. Um, we placed a citation on 920 of 2021 in the amount of $300. Uh, the citation was placed for failure to post your address numbers. Um, has that since been corrected? I believe it has, but let me verify that, sir. Total compliance on posting the address numbers. Mr. Pearl, I'll leave it to your discretion. Um, but I, I would recommend a, um, what do we call that? A deferred payment or deferred uh, penalty. Thank you. All right. Um, Ms. Willoughby um, or um, Ms. Owens, do you have any other comment before I make a ruling? No, they no. they told me to to do it, and I posted it on the side of the mailbox, and they said they couldn't see it. So now it's posted twice over the door and on the front of the mailbox, so okay. that it's in total compliance. All right. And so in case number ENF dash PMNT dash twenty one dash zero zero five six eight eight dash three, the address being twenty, or excuse me, seventy five zero one Gerald Avenue. Going to find the conditions did exist. I'm going to uphold the citation and assess. Uh, the $300 penalty. However, I will conditionally discharge the entire $300 penalty with the stipulation there may be no future violations for a period of one year. Um, and I think Ms. Owens, you'll have that taken care of since you posted as, as well as you possibly can. Thank, Thank you, you very much for your cooperation. Thank you so much. All right. Do we have anyone online whose case has not been called? Anyone online whose case has not been called? Again, is there anyone online for Cobor whose case has not been called? Okay, Mr. Fields, I guess we can proceed with no shows. Yes, sir. Give me one moment here. Okay. All righty. Case number 13 PM 10737-ZM-28416 Magnolia Avenue. Notice was sent. Uh, for failure to show, I uphold the citation and the entire $600 penalty. Case number ENF dash PMNT dash 19 dash 008553 dash 13 4116 First Street. Notice was sent. Um, for failure to show, I uphold the citation and the entire $100 penalty. Case number ENF dash PMNT dash 20 dash 002506 dash 4 2729 Portland Avenue. Notice was sent. Uh, for failure to show, I pulled the citation and the entire $400 penalty. 
Case number ENF PMNT 20 005361 6408th Street. Notice was sent. Uh, for failure to show, I uphold the citation and the entire $500 penalty. Case number ENF PMNT 20 Sorry, Mr. Perry, did we just do Portland or 34? We did 34th. Thank you, sir. ENF PMNT 20 009342 7. 1131 Berry Boulevard, notice was sent. Uh, for failure to show, I oppose the citation and the entire $700 penalty. Case number ENF PMNT 20 012343 7, 123 25th Street, notice was sent. Um, for failure to show, I oppose the citation and the entire $600 penalty. ENF PMNT 21 001548 5, 3424 Jefferson Street. Notice was sent. For failure to show, I uphold the citation and the entire $500 penalty. Case number ENF PMNT 21 005408 2 3118 Lake Heath Drive. Um, for failure to show, oops, um, I'm waiting for you, Dwayne. Notice was sent. <laughs> for failure to sent. show, I uphold the citation and the entire $200 penalty. All right. Case number ENF PMNT 21 008329 4 929 Central Avenue. Notice was sent. For failure to show, I uphold the citation and the entire $400 penalty. Case number ENF PMNT 21 012948 3 3022 Irish Way. Notice was sent. For failure to show, I hold the citation and the entire $300 penalty. Dwayne, did I miss one? Um, uh, 5525 Menyard Drive? That one was taken off the docket. It was rescheduled. Okay. Rescheduled. Okay. Yes, sir. And then I have a case that would like to be heard again, Mr. Crow. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, case case number ENF PMN PMNT 20 008921 7. The address being 1511 Larchmont. Had a hearing on February the 11th that was missed because he couldn't log on. He called on February the 11th right okay. after hearings and explained. All right, Brewing, that's fine. Reschedule that one. Whenever yes, you can fit it on any one of those dockets. Yes, sir. And I think that's all the business I have, Mr. Pearl. All right. Is there any other business to come before the board? All right. We are adjourned. Thank you for Thank your you. help. Uh, just a comment, guys, about that um, uh, Mr. Bla Bean Blossom property. Um, that that was a real heart string property in case you couldn't tell uh you know i uh, I've, I've worked with him for a number of years now on that property um and and it was indeed a labor of love for him i've never had to save this before yeah yeah he he wanted to keep that property as long as he could possibly keep that property so it, it's a real heart string pull to see that he's finally decided he's got to get rid of it, but um, it's it's the best thing for him. I I you know I cautioned him extremely uh, harsh uh, the last time he was before me because he wanted to get up on that third floor of that property on scaffolding at the age of seventy five then. Um, and I was, you know, I, 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 I told him, I, I felt like it was a, um, uh, you know, issue that, you know, could possibly, uh, result in his ultimate demise. Uh, and, um, so, you know, I, I, again, that one was a real struggle for me as well. Uh, you know, you're wow. Yeah, it really was an amazing house. I wonder how long yeah. had he lived there. Do you know, or was he? I'm assuming he was living there at least at some point. Yeah. 
it was his property. He he's lived in it for over fifty years. Wow. You know, um, and uh, so it, it, and it, you're right, Kathleen. Uh, that is an amazing property. It's got some amazing history with it, uh, and it's just you know, it's just really sad uh, to see something like that um, go down. But you know, as we all age, we get to a point. To where we can't handle those kinds of things and he is there um, and i guess uh if if we can say we accomplished anything we got that uh, uh reality to him so yeah well done yeah. bro Hopefully all right it goes to someone who takes care of it and will not be before the board <laughs> yes 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 preach so, uh, <laughs> thanks so much you guys have a great weekend you too. Thank you. You too. Take care, everyone. Thank you. It's Bye. good to be in good company. Professionals. Thank you. Thank you as well, Mr. Stingle. Take care. You too, Mr. Stingle. <laughs> Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.